What's up? I'm Justin Voss. I make welding and fabrication videos here on YouTube. And today we're going to see how I made this stainless steel dice sculpture and how you can too. All right, I got the entire kit cut out on the Fast Cut CNC. I'm saying kit because I think I'm going to offer this on my website, defiantmetal.com, for sale if anybody else wants to try it out. Uh, and if someone else has their own plasma cutter or just wants to cut all these parts by hand, I'm going to put the files up for that too. So now that these are cut out and these are all stainless steel, we have a bit of oxidation all the way around the edge that is typical from plasma cutting. So next, I'm going to take this Blackhawk flat disc from Empire Abrasives. They're actually the sponsor of this video, so I'll talk more about them later. And I'm going to clean up all the oxidation around the edge of all these parts. So I knew I wanted some kind of finish on the dice and the base, and since there's so many different size parts and small parts, I thought tacking them down to this plate would make life easier while I use the DA and try and get a good finish, at least a starter finish, before I tack everything together. I had some DA pads from Empire Braces for a different project, and I didn't really know how they would look on here or what look I was going for, so I started off with a 400 grit, and then ended up settling on a 320 and went over everything. I'm gonna leave the outside of the cube and the base at the 320 grit, but for the backer plates that actually are gonna go behind the dice circles, I wanted something a little bit more aggressive, so I went over all these with an 80 grit. My next great idea is to change the color of the back plates to like a gold. You know how when you heat up stainless at just the right temperature, it'll kind of start turning gold before it turns purple. So I was hopefully thinking I could get all these plates a nice gold color. I'm having a heck of a time keeping the color an even color, so I'm trying to cut them loose and maybe prop them up and get some air circulating around them and maybe the heat will spread out a little bit better, hopefully. And luckily, the mail came just in time for this next part. This is my order from Empire Abrasives, who is the sponsor of this video. These are pretty much just little sandpaper barrels. They call them cartridge rolls, but I usually call them like little Tootsie Rolls. And they look like that, and they go on an arbor just like this that you can also get from Empire Abrasives. And it just screws right over the end like that until it kind of feels tight. And that will allow us to easily get inside here and clean this out. Empire Abrasives is great because they offer quality abrasives at a discounted price. Um, they have fast shipping. A lot of times your order will ship out the same day. And if you ordered over $100, um, it's free shipping. And their catalog is growing. Um, I don't use even a tenth of the stuff that's on there. I get these. I, I love these little three inch flap discs they have. It's got the Rolox style with the arbor that you can also get from there the surface conditioning disc that I use all the time. So yeah, check them out at empireabrasives.com. I'll leave a link to them down below. If you click through there, it lets them know you heard about them here. And if you've never been there before, and this is your first order, you can use promo code VOSS at checkout, and that'll give you 10% off. So thanks again to Empire Abrasives for sponsoring this video. And I'm gonna get these holes cleaned out now. I think the best way to get these back pieces on is just to lay the main faceplate down on the table. I tried to clean up my table to make sure not to scratch our newly finished surface. And then I can clamp the back plate nice and tight against it and tack off four corners.
I have to do this to all six sides and I tried to line up the way the color looked depending on what side had which holes and what looked the best. I did notice that 160 amps seemed a little hot, so I turned it down to 130 for now. Starting off on the base, this is what the cube's actually gonna set in if you wanted to like set it on a desk or something. It has three sides and these need to kind of not overlap at all the way I drew this up. So you gotta line up the very edge of the corner and I really couldn't hold it with my hands. So just laying them flat together and gonna put a couple just blast tacks, no filler on the very edge. And then that way I can pry it open to the angle I want and then add in the third piece. Before I get into welding, 130 amps still seems a little hot, so I'm gonna turn it down to about 118 amps and uh, roll with that. Uphill didn't really feel like the way to go. I had a hard time seeing the back of the puddle. So for the next one, I'm gonna try like propping it up on a block and getting it flat across in a more comfortable position. I think they turned out okay. Outside corners have always been my worst weld, especially on steel, just something with the gas flow. But uh, hopefully we can get it dialed in a little bit better for when we actually do the cube here. I had to print off some screenshots of the 3D model I drew to make sure I got this part right. Uh, a six-sided dice actually always equals seven on the opposite sides of each other. So I decided to make the five and the two, the top and the bottom, and they are actually uh, symmetrical pieces, height and width wise. And then the sides are all wider than they are tall because they are gonna go under the top and the bottom, hopefully making the whole thing an actual cube. And I wanted to make sure I had it laid out correctly. I think there's a lot of different things you could do with this, even though it is pretty simple. But other than just welding it up, one thing you could do is maybe put a hinge and a lid and actually make it like a usable item. But I'm not doing that. So here I had to make the top of the base and actually make sure that the cube could fit in it. So I thought before I put my final finish on the cube, it'd be good to tack the pieces together and use the cube. That way I make sure everything fits nice. These are just some little platforms to stick little rubber feet, you know, like little cabinet bumpers. That way you can throw it up on a desk and not worry about it scratching. Uh, if you order the kit, it'll actually come with those little feet. Now I'm just gonna hit it one more time with the DA to put the final finish on it and to get rid of those little heat signature marks from tacking the back blade on. Then just wipe it down with some acetone and we'll be ready to hopefully do some money welds. I'm not gonna lie, I thought it looked pretty good just tacked together. If I would have been a little bit more strategic with my tack welds, maybe I'd leave it like this, but I think this one needs to be welded.
There it is. It was actually a fun little project. There's so many different ways that you could do this. As I was working on it, I kept thinking of different ideas. When I had it just tacked up, it looked really nice. If I would have took a little care with my tacks uh, in where I put them, I might have left it like that. But I think it looks really nice welded. You could also weld it all up and then polish it all back down to like a mirror and get rid of the welds completely. Who knows? There's all different kinds of ways. Get rid of the backer, have the door, make it a compartment. Who knows? Um, Hopefully, I'll have some detailed plans on how you can make this by hand if you don't have your own CNC to use the uh, DXF cut files or if you don't want to actually purchase the kit. Um, anyways, I hope you check out the link down below to Empire Abrasives, who we did all the grinding and finishing with. Um, if you haven't purchased from them before, don't forget to use promo code VOSS at checkout. And if you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. Maybe share the video to a friend, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.